Hey guys, what's up? Are you one or zero here? In this video, we will be solving our first hard level OCP similar hacked box machine, which is Kotarak. It was a cool box, especially when it comes to privilege escalation, we needed to read a long proof of concept from exploit DB and try to apply it for our own box. And I think it's particularly hard. And, and as you know, I don't like Jitja so much. So if you're ready, let's jump in. <laughs> Welcome to off sex certification, penetration, test, better than the rest. As always, I'm starting with an Nmap scan, I'm looking for all ports because there will be a web port open, um, HTTP port open in 60,000 ports. So I will be going to my browser and will be checking 60,000. As you can see, there's the um, search option here. And I will be also checking the other port 8080, which is Apache Tomcat. The first thing that I'm doing when I see Apache Tomcat is going to manager HTML to see if there is a login page. Um, there is, maybe we can try default passwords and stuff, but maybe not. So the thing I will do is I will search for a keyword. As you can see, it's going to the file url.php with the keyword pat. So first of all, I'm checking for LFI, looking for etc passpd or any similar um, payloads that I can try. It's not working. The next thing I'm checking is if there is SSRF possible here, I'm going to localhost and just try and the port that I know, which is open 22 SSH. And as you can see, it's given us the SSH banner, which means we actually exploited an SSR vulnerability here in, the, in less than a minute, cool. So the next thing you can do is we can check for more local ports open on the box. Uh, we can use VFAS for this. Um, just pause the video if you are not familiar with VFAS comments and check my comment what I'm writing in here, please. As you can see, we are using minus Z range, which is for ports, for all ports. And I will be fuzzing on the port part, which is after localhost. So pause, um, pause the comment output for a second when you see that it's coming like uh, crazy. And as you can see, there is this uh, character length to, um, which is basically dump data. We don't need this. We need the data, the character length uh, value, which is not equal to two. So I will be removing all these data so that I can see only the meaningful um, for length minus minus HL. Um, for lines minus minus HL, we will use not length, sorry, uh, so that we can remove them. As you can see, it's actually given us the open ports that we saw, 22, 110, 90, et cetera. So I will be start trying all of these. Uh, when I check 888, as you can see, there is another file viewer uh, HTTP page. And I see the backup file, I'm, I'm thinking, maybe we can extract some passwords or something here. So I fired a burp to make sure that I can read it properly in case I can't see everything on browser. Um, I basically just intercepted the request and when I check for backup file, as you can see, it's for Tomcat users. It's an XML file format and it's given us a username password in clear text. How cute is that? So uh, since it says Tomcat, we already found the Tomcat page and we know the username admin, we know the password. So there is nothing else to do, but go into the Tomcat page. We're going there, manager HTML, writing admin and the password that we just found. We're pasting it there um, and our lovely beautiful Tomcat page is here. So the first thing I will do is I will be creating a WAR file with MSF Phenom, um, writing my listening host and listening port, uh, whatever port number that I'm gonna listen on, minus F for file format and minus O for output. I am saving the file. I just start listening on the port 888 so that I will get a show. Ultimate purpose, right? Um, the next thing I will do is I will be uploading this WAR file to Tomcat page. I am just going to the directory that I saved the file, temp. I'm deploying. Normally, if you go to the name Kelly said that we just uploaded, it's supposed to give us a shell. But as you can see, it says no files found. So there's a trick, a trick. War file is basically a zipped file. So if you check which kind of files is there with minus L option for unzip comment, you can actually see which kind of files are um, zipped inside compress inside, let's say. So as you can see, there's this JSP file um, with a 
gibberish name. So what we will do is we will be copying this uh, file name and pasting it to the directory Kalisa, which was the war file name. If you go back to our listener, we got a shell. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I am just upgrading to a best shell from um, SHO, writing our classical Python one-liner or whatever. Just writing it to get a best shell so that I can move around, play around a bit. Cool. I'm just looking in the home directory of my current user, which is Tomcat, and I'm gonna find the following folder to archive. We love these kind of backup files. We're just going there. Um, there are multiple folders inside Pentas data. Probably they didn't delete it. There can be some useful stuff there. And this is another trick that we're gonna use for, uh, that we're gonna learn from this box. We saw .dot and .dot bin files. So from there, we will extract some hashes. There is a technique that I will show you guys. Uh, we will use a tool in packet. Um, we will use a script from there. But first of all, we need to send these files to our own um, attacker machine. So I'm going to use netcat for this. If you're not if you're not familiar with this trick, this is another important point that you can just post video and you can realize what I'm just talking about. Um, I will just locate this file, secretsdump.py. Like I mentioned, this is a, a file and script from tool in packet. So we will be using the dit, .dit and .bin files. And here is the format for it. You can, like I said, pause the video and uh, check it out, what, what I'm doing. And we dumped all these hashes. Cool. So when you get hashes, of course, you need to send it to John so that it can crack it for you. I will just save some of these hashes. Like, um, all right, we are saving these files here and um, I will be cracking it with John. Uh, you can just specify the format as NT and you will be writing the word list, work your TXT and the file name hashes. It will crack it very quickly. As, as you can see, there is the password for administrator. So what I will do is I will use this password to impersonate my user to one of these that I saw, whether administrator, Atanas, or whatever. I will be using Atanas, uh, which will work on my box. Cool. Next step is going to root, which is the step that makes this box hard, I think. So I am looking around um, and under root directory, I am seeing two files owned by the user that uh, I am right now, which is Atanas. Flag.txt, congratulations, you can read that uh, flag.txt. And the other one is app.log. The thing I'm seeing is that uh, every minute or whatever, uh, vget is being used to get some archive file. And I'm seeing that we get uh, version is very old. So the thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check on exploit DB or with search exploit to find some exploit for we get. And lucky us, there is an exploit, but I'm not sure if that's the lucky part because the proof of concept is all long. Okay, um, this is the part that I'm not gonna explain. You need to go over it because if I start explaining, the video will be really long. Um, so left part is vulnerable box, right part is my attacker box. According to proof of concept, we are supposed to create a folder. I created this FTP test, and we are supposed to have two files, which is already written in proof of concept. You're not supposed to write something from your own knowledge. You're supposed to copy and paste, which is not hard. So here are the files that I just copied and pasted for this folder that I created, FTP test. The files are .vgetrc, we're supposed to name it in this way and the other one you can name whatever i named it as exploit.py so for vget rc um we are not supposed to do anything interesting um you can change it this post file for instance it's etc shadow right now but it doesn't matter because we're not trying to read um root.txt file uh, we're trying to get the reverse shell which will be specified in exploit.py file cool but the trick is that it's supposed to stay in the same directory um, with the exploit.py file. Cool. Um, as you can see, the only part that I changed in the Python script uh, is this part, 
IP address, port numbers, and the comment that you're going to get the reverse shell of. HTTP listen IP, local, HTTP listen port 80, which will be the, in the attacker box. HTTP host will be my own IP address. Port number 21, because we will be firing up an FTP server on our attacker box. That's why we are specifying our, our own IP address for the FTP host, not HTTP. The next thing I will do is the Chrome um, comment, let's say, Chrome job comment, uh, which will be a bash one-liner. You can just check it from um, Pandas Monkey one-liners. I will be writing my IP address and the port number 6666, which I will be listening on. Nothing complex, but you need to read the proof of concept. It's all written there. Uh, it also explains what you're supposed to change. Cool. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to listen on port 6666 so that I wouldn't um, forget that at some point. The next thing I'm going to do on the left side, if you pay attention, I, I sent exploit.py file from my attacker box to the vulnerable box with weekend. I did a root directory. There was no problem happening. Uh, and the next thing I tried was running it with Python, but there were some problems. There were some errors happening. So the next trick that I did was using Oatbind, which is already installed on the box. Um, don't forget this trick. You can use this. Uh, when I did this, I was able to run the exploit. So what, what does it say? Um, check if your FTP server is running on your attacker box. Exploit is telling us. Um, FTP found open on my vulnerable box already, sorry, attacker box already. Um, before I create this video, I already fired up 21 orders running right now. That's why it's working actually. Then it says serving VGET exploit on port 80, which is on um, attacker box. Cool. And I'm already listening on port 6666. And if you wait for a few seconds, but as you can see, we got the root shell. And very rude. So hopefully you like this video. Uh, hopefully I didn't make it very complex for you guys because as I mentioned, uh, proof of concept is not so easy to uh, read because it's very long and can get confusing. Uh, it's not hard, but it's also not so easy. That's why the level of this box is hard, as I guess. Um, but yeah, we sold it around in 10 minutes and we learned many different techniques here. So I like this box. Hopefully you like it too. I will try to create another video for the next week. Uh, hopefully you liked it. Please drop a comment so that, um, I'm reading all these comments, even if I'm not answering and I will try to apply whatever suggestion you have for the next videos. Stay tuned guys. Cheers. This one dedicated to all those who complete the mass sex certification The ones who not fall to not waver The ones who try hard and get free of You must not fail, you must not nigga